Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I'm your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. So in our class today, we'll be dealing, uh, it's just a continuation of uh, what we started earlier on post book, uh, the aspect of our costing methods. And the first method that we looked in our previous class was the aspect of job order costing method. So in our class today, allowed us to concentrate on batch costing as part of our costing method. So we are talking of what? Batch costing. Batch costing method. So whenever we are talking of batch costing, what should we always have in mind? Whenever we are talking of a batch costing, what should we always have in mind? Ideally, whenever we we'll be looking at a batch costing, we normally say that uh, it's just a form of a costing which is used where quantity of identical articles are produced together as, as a batch. So we are looking at a case whereby I'm looking at a point of a costing method which is used to where quantity of identical articles are produced together as as a batch so this is what you're saying at any given point whenever we'll be talking of batch costing we'll always be looking at a form of costing method form of costing form of costing uh, which is used to a quantity which is used where quantity which is used where quantity of identical articles of identical articles are produced are produced are produced together as a batch are produced together as a batch so this is what you are talking about form of uh, costing which is used where quantities of identical articles are produced uh, of course together as a batch so we'll be looking at a point whereby yes i need to achieve a certain cost of a given product so in this case we we'll never be producing them as a batch that is where this component will come in i'm taking identical units producing them at once as a batch so that is what you're terming it as batch costing because if you can recall the main concept it it is upon us to identify the total cost that we've incurred in producing a certain product. And that's the main idea of what? Costing method. So, to understand the concept of batch costing, a lot us consider an illustration question. Uh, that a, a question which was, uh, this is a question which was tested in uh, our paper that was uh, in either November 2018. That was either question three or four. Then, again, this is also a very good illustration question that I want us to handle in our class so that it will give you a wider understanding when it comes to batch costing. And this is a question that you're going to handle. This is a question. So, uh, looking at this question, I want us to go through that question together, all of us, so that we should get an idea of what batch costing is. So in our case, you are told that uh, the budgeted variable overs of Jack Ma Limited for the year 2018 are given as below. So department overheads absorption base. So the, uh, I'm given uh, the override is in shillings and absorption base, which I'm given there. Then A, B, C, and D. Then your additional information, you are told that uh, selling and administrating overheads are charged at 10% of total production cost. Why the profit, remember for production cost, I must come up with, first of all, the prime cost. Then after prime cost, we need to add the production to give production always to determine what? Our total production cost. Note two, an order of 2,000 units was received from a customer. The batch number of this order is 510. Uh -huh. The following additional information in respect of the batch is provided below. So the bag that uh, we were producing, it constitutes of the following. Number one, direct materials, 87,000. Direct labor for department A, uh, 150 at 12, department B, C up to D. Then total, a total of uh, 50 machine hours were used in this job. A total of 50 machine hours were used in this job. So required, calculate, number A, or part A, total cost of the batch, cost per unit, selling price of the batch and selling price per unit so this is a very good question because the examiner has touched almost in every angle that we'll always be looking at whenever we'll be handling the concept of batch costing so to start 
first of all, you mentioned that at this point, I need to know the concept of the course that we'll always be having in manufacturing. Of course, you normally talk of all direct costs. Whenever we'll be having, say, like direct labor, talk of uh, maybe uh, direct uh, materials and any other component of direct cost. This should give us the summation of all these direct expenses. Of course, that should give us what is known, what is known as what? The prime cost. That should give us what is known as the prime cost. So, in addition of the prime cost, we normally talk of what? Our production OHDs. So, adding our production overheads, this will give us our total production cost. Total production cost. That should give us our total production cost. That is uh, the addition of the addition of all these elements. So it will be upon us to analyze the cost that you are given so that it should assist us to know the cost that we had. To achieve the prime cost, then you had production otherwise, then we'll go ahead and tackle the aspect or determine the total production cost. So looking at that question clearly, it will be upon us to identify the cost that you are given. So allow me to raise this concept. So working out the solution to this question, having our solution here, having our solution. So looking at our solution, I need to identify the cost. In this case, we are looking at batch costing. This is Jack Ma Limited. Jack Ma LTD, Jack Ma Limited. Identifying the aspect of uh, the cost, the batch cost. So, uh, this is a batch cost for Jack Ma, batch cost. So, first thing first, we've said you're going to identify the cost that I was given. So, looking at our costs here, we start by identifying what I was given. First component, we are given material cost. So, talk of material cost. And in this case, material cost, I was given how much? Material cost. For material cost, my goods, you know how much was I given? Come back to our question. We identify the material cost. I was told we had how much? For material cost, we were given a figure of not two. Direct materials, I was given 87,000. So comfortably, I can come and have here our 87,000 shillings. That is our material. That is our material cost. I'm given 87,000 shillings. So we have 87,000 shillings being our material cost. Uh -huh. After we've identified our material cost, the next component would be upon us to identify other costs given. In this case, talk of direct costs. I'm given direct labor, department A, B, C, and D. So I should be having our direct labor. So I'm going to have our direct labor cost here. Talk of our direct labor cost. Direct labor cost, clearly I've been given how many departments. We do have department A, department B, department C, and department D. So, for like a uh, direct labor cost, department A, I'm given how much? Come back to our question. Just look at our question or what we are given. So, I was told that I'm having department A, we have 150 direct labor hours, and each hour I was paying at how much? 12. So, I'll be having 150 by 12 for department A. Department B, I'm given. 40 direct labor hours in each hour was paying how much? 15 shillings. So 40 by 15. The other department, C, I should be having 60 direct labor hours in each. I was paying how much? 20 shillings. So 60 by 20. Then D, I'm having 100 each. I'm paying how much? 10 shillings. So 100 each. I'm paying 10 shillings. So, what will we be having in relation to our direct labor cost? So, I should be having 150 by 12. So, I'm going to have 150 by 12 to give us a figure for much? 1800. So, at this point, I should be having 1800. Uh huh. Talk of uh, Department B, 40 
by 15 to give us how much? 600. Talk of C, I should be having 60 by 20 to give us how much? 1200. Talk of uh, that should give us 1000. So total direct labor cost, I should be having 1800 plus 600 plus 1200 plus 1000. That should give us how much? 4,600. So 4,600. Direct labor cost. Direct labor cost. So after we are done with that, it will also be upon us to identify if we had any other direct cost. So back to our question. Back to our question. Back to our question here. We identify if we had any other. If we had any other. Uh direct cost I'm not seeing any other direct cost I'm not seeing any other direct cost so to that point confidently I can come and have what our prime cost because you don't have any other direct cost given so I can come and have what our prime cost so what will be our prime cost here? Talk of our prime cost. Prime cost. I should be having a figure of 87,000. 87,000. We add 4,600. I should be having 91,600. My prime cost is 91,600. 91,600. Then after that case, I need to take into consideration also the production overheads. In our case, are we given any production OHDs? Are we given any production overheads? That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. So back to our question, we need to identify if I was given any production overheads. And this is our question. So, uh, yeah, talk of uh, look at uh, this case. Department overheads in shillings, then I'm given the absorption base. So in that case, I need to uh, determine our production OHDs based under each based under each component given here. Based under each component given here, department A. So you should be having department A, department B, department C, and department D. These are production always that I was given. So like uh, to start with department A, we are told that department A, the total department over this one, 50,000. But in this case, we are told that the basis absorption base was direct labor hours. Absorption base was direct labor hours. So given such a question, my good student, where are you going to start from? I'm given the production overheads and I'm also given our base. That should take us to the concept of overhead absorption rate. What would be our overhead absorption rate? Our overhead absorption rate like for A, I should be having what I'm given, the total cost overheads I'm given uh, 150,000. So I should be having 150,000. Yes, we should be having 150,000. We divide by the absorption base so it should be having 150 we divide by what i'm given there so 150,000. we divide by 15,000. we divide by 15,000. so ideally first of all that should give me how much that should give us uh, 150,000. we divide by 15,000 to give us 10. so that should give us 10. So that should give us 10, yeah. So I'm going to have our 10 at that point. Talk of B. Again, B, what will we be having? For B, what I was given, the same case, we determine our overhead absorption rate. So in this case, I'm having 200,000 by 25. So you should be having for B, 200,000, we divide by 25,000. Talk of C. I should be having 120,000 divided by 20,000. So 120,000 divided by 20,000. 
and uh, torque of uh, D, I should be having 300,000 divided by 30,000. So 300,000 divided by 30,000. So we have our overhead absorption rate under each department. So this is what we should be having. So the first case I should be having, we've determined it to be 10. Department B, I should be having 200,000. We divide by 25,000. That should give us 8. Department C, what should we be having? 120,000. We divide by 20,000. That should give us 6. Department D, I should be having 300,000. We divide by 30,000. That should give us how much? 10. So I'm having overhead absorption rate per hour. Overhead absorption rate per hour. The question here will be, how many hours were we taking for A? How many hours were we taking in department A? In that case, like whenever you're looking, uh, when we looked at a direct labor hours, you see that we had our labor hours times what? Times the rate. This is what we had in that question. This is what we had in that question. I'm having uh, talk of uh, like department A, I'm having 150 direct labor hours. And in that case, I was paying how much? 12 shillings. Uh, B, 40, 60, and 100 for B, C, and D, respectively. Solving this case, the same concept now to determine our production overs for these departments. I'm going to multiply. This is the overhead absorption rate. We multiply by the number of hours. Like in the first case, I'm having 150. For B, I'm having 40. For C, we have 60. And for D, we have 100. So, like in that case, uh, for B, we are told what? Uh, that's what we have. So, I'm having A, B, C, and D. But remember, for D, we are given machine hours. So, mark that very clearly. We are given uh, our machine hours. We are given machine hours, meaning that in that case, I'm not going to deal with our labor hours, but I'm going to incorporate what? Our machine hours. We are going to incorporate our machine hours. And we are told that uh, a total of 50,000 machine hours were used. Look at that, note 2, the last dash. A total of 50 machine hours were used in this job. So, in this case, meaning that I won't take the labor hours. But what are we going to do? We are going to consider our machine hours, which the examiner had given me to be 50. Because even this 30,000 was machine hours. So, confidently, I can come and determine our costs. So, determining our cost. The first one should give us 1,500. The other one should give me how much? Uh, 40 by 8 to give us 320. 60, uh, 6 by 60 to give us 360. And of course, this one should give us how much? 500, right? So, production over its total. Our production over its total, therefore, I should be having 1,500 plus 320 plus 360 plus 500 to give us 2680 to give us 2680 so I'm having 2680 here 2680 so that is our production overheads are we done with our cost are we done with our cost that's the question that we should be asking ourselves are we done with our cost or not yet so looking at that case come to our question let us see if we are done with the costs given uh -huh. So additional information, which one, selling and admin stative always are charged 10% of total production costs, while profit markup is of total cost, 25% of the total cost. So I need to determine our selling and administrative overheads, selling and administrative overheads. So I'll just be having it here. Selling and admin OHDs. I'm given what? 20% of our total production cost. 20% of our total production cost. And what will be our production cost? What will be our production cost? My production cost in this case, I should be having how much? I should be having 91,600 
plus 2680. So I'm having 94, 280. 94, 280. 94, 280. This is our production total production costs total production cost i'm having 94 280 so in this case examiner has told us that we need also to incorporate selling and administrative expenses so looking at our selling and admin expenses selling and admin cost we are given what percentage look at our question you are given what percentage uh, we are told that selling and admin cost it was charged at 10% of the total production cost. So it should be having 10% times 94, 280. Ideally, that should give us how much, my good student? That should give us how much? 94, 28, right? Being our selling and admin cost. So to that point, we can determine our total cost for this product, we can, for this batch. So talk of our total cost. My total cost, therefore, that will be simple because I'll just be taking 94 to 80. We add 94.28. We add 94.28 to give us 103.708. To give us 103.708. 708 being our total cost being our total cost 103 708 and i believe that's the first thing that the examiner wanted us to compute because in our uh, we are told that we should calculate the total cost of the batch so in this case we've determined our total cost of the batch being 103 708 103 708 that should be the total cost of the batch which the examiner wanted us to compute the next question what was the next question mm -hmm. the next question you are told to do what uh, the next question you are told to prepare our cost per unit to prepare our cost per unit i know that will be simple now that will be very simple because to prepare the total cost per unit, I've already determined our total cost. I've already determined our total cost. So it just be upon us to identify the number of units that we'll be having. So part A, we are done. Part B of the question, we are told to determine the total cost per unit. So what will be our total cost per unit? To determine our total cost per unit, I'll just be having what? I need to come up with my total cost. We divide by the number of units, number of units that you are given or produced. So our total cost in this case, you are determining it to be 103,708. So I'll be having 103,708. Yeah, we divide by the number of units. How many units were we given in this case? How many units were we given? So the number of units given, we are told that we had how many units? Uh, we are told in note number two that an order for 2,000 units was received from a customer. That is not true. An order for 2,000 units was received from a customer. The batch number of this order was 510. So I'm given 2,000 units. So I'm given 2,000 units. So that is what we are going to take. So, 103.708, we divide by 2,000 units. As simple as that. So, that should give us how much? 103.708, we divide by 2,000 to give us 51.85 per unit. 51.85 shillings per unit. That is what you are told to do. That is part B, we are done, just like that. Then we go to part C of the question. What was the part C? What was the requirement for part C? Part C of this question, you are told what? Part C of the question, the examiner had requested us to uh, prepare the selling price of the batch, to come up with the selling price of the batch. So, 
coming up with the selling price of the batch selling price of the batch what will you be having as the selling price of the batch so part c of the question we need to come up with the selling price selling price of the batch selling price of the batch so how will you calculate the selling price of the batch how will you can get the selling price of the batch so calculating our selling price of the batch it depends with the policy of the company there are some company that they are going to add probably profit markup on their cost and there are some companies that they can just say that a specific profit that they want to earn so in our case what are we given this question what are we given this question we need to identify what we were given in this question and in our question we are told that uh, in note number one, selling and administrative overheads are charged at 10% of total production cost, while the profit markup is 25% of total cost. So I'm given profit markup. So our total cost, our total cost, our total cost will only determine our total cost to be 103,708. 103,708. Mm -hmm. What about our markup? Markup here, the examiner has given us clearly. Markup, I'm given 25%. And ideally, this one will always be on aspect of cost. Markup will always be expressed in terms of cost. So my profit markup I should be having 0.25, yes, times 103, 708. To give us how much? 25, 9, 27. That should give us 25. That should give us 25,927 being our markup, being our markup. Meaning that if I want to identify the selling price of this component, our selling price therefore, our selling price therefore, I should be having 25,927, we add 103,708. That should give us how much? 129. 635 being our selling price being our selling price so you just take our total cost we add our markup for us to identify what our selling price for us to achieve our selling price so are we done with the question let us see if we are given any other requirement to compute so like uh, the other point we are told that the selling price per unit the selling price per unit selling price per unit that will be simple now. Part D. Selling price per unit. Selling price per unit. So that will be very simple because at this point you've already determined our selling price. So I should be having my selling price, our total uh, selling price or sales, we divide by the number of units. So, in our case, our sales, we've determined it to be 129. So, in this case, I'll just be talking of 129,635. We divide by the number of units. Number of units, you are given 2,000 units. So, you should just be having 2,000 units. Meaning that our selling price per unit will be how much? 129,635. We divide by 2,000 units. To give us 64.81 64.81 selling price per unit remember these figures are in shillings 64.81 and that is batch costing so long as you are able to identify the cost that you are given in relation to that and also look at the batch that you are given you'll find that handling these questions will be very easy and in that case, it's a question that was tested in November 2018 in our first paper. I want us to try that question. As much as we provided the video for that question, but I want us to try that question, then measure yourself. So to this point, uh, that will mark the end of our batch costing lesson for today. So I wish you to join me in the next session whereby we are going to introduce process costing. We are going to introduce process costing, a very key element in our syllabus process costing thank you so much and let us meet in the next session
And remember, in the event that you have any question, you can always ask us on the ask question button just below the subtopic. Just below the subtopic. Thank you so much.